So today I have an assistant, I'm proud to say. It sucks a lot and it really likes to drag its feet. But as you can see, my amazing assistant today is my vacuum cleaner with a <laughs> cord attached to it. Nice. It works great. It's sword light. Art online. Sorry? Oh, yeah, it's, sword, yeah, it's the Sword Art Online one. Uh, I have another one. Uh, it's uh, attached via rubber bands, and it will, I'll use it primarily to them just to make sure that it works for uh, for demonstrations. But if you like, just to illustrate some other points. But otherwise, I think we can get started. Let's have the weapons at our side. What's this saluted? And Elia, you are muted, so if you have any questions you want to ask, uh, make sure to unmute yourself. Otherwise, weapons... I will keep that in mind. Arte. Arte. Ardore. Ardore. Honore. Honore. Wonderful. So today we're going to continue on with feints and, well, provocations and specifically attacks to miss. So let's start with a bit of a warm up and I'll talk as we go along. Uh, start rolling your shoulders back. So, quick review. What is a provocation and what is a feint? So, let's start with what is a provocation? An action to draw predictable action from your opponent. Switch directions. That is correct. That is a provocation, a predictable action. Uh, drawing predictable actions is kind of how you win a fight. So what is a feint? Predictable action of attacking. To draw a defense. All right, hands out to the side. Start rotating your elbow, your forearms around your elbows. So part of it draws, what sort of, uh, when you do a feint, what sort of action are you expecting your opponent to do? You're trying to draw a specific defense, usually. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, and then transition into a into an attack uh, that is different from the one that you're right. originally doing. So a deceptive action is specifically a deceit. Uh, you are doing a false attack that will draw up typically a defensive action from your opponent. So that's usually where we're thinking. All right, uh, hands and hips. Start making big circles with your hips. So what is an attack to miss? And how is an attack to miss different? than a feint. Uh, I think the attack to miss is a little off target, so the defense is way larger than usual. And you have a, 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 a uh, you have an advantage of proportion on your side because you are drawing a larger defense from the opponent. Good. So both of them, that's actually a good quality for both things and attacks. Yeah. But that's something that you want to do. And proportion is not something we talked about last class, which is um, bring your feet together, start making small circles with your knees. Uh, we want to make sure that we can draw a big action from your opponent, or at least bigger, bigger than your own action. So directions. So what? Uh, so how do we distinguish between a feint and an attack to miss? They're both deceptions. So an attack to miss will always miss. Yes. A feint. If they don't defend, you should hit them. Yes. Good. That's, uh, that's functionally where uh, it is different is the attack to miss is an attack that will miss regardless. It is not aiming for the target. A feint can initiate and if nothing, if your opponent doesn't fall for it, you can continue the action forward and still land the action. So that's essentially the difference between the two. Uh, let's do some balancing exercises because they are fun to do. And well, let's try it out. So, uh, what I'm going to start with is, I'm going to face to my left. I'm going to bend my knees a, a little bit. I'm going to lift up my right knee, kind of bend it to the side, and then turn it and tilt it so that it's pointed straight to the right. Once it's pointed straight to the right, I'm going to lift up my foot, and I'm going to place it against my calf. If you're able to, you can also place it over your knee, but whatever you do, do not place it on your, uh, on your knee itself. So I'm going to place it on my calf. And from here, I'm going to lift up my hands as if I was kind of in Posa Longa. I'm standing on one foot. I'm going to lift up my leg, extend it back. And as I do so, I'm trying to reach my leg as far back as it goes. I'm bending my front leg so that I'm getting closer to the ground and slowly planting my back, my foot back onto the ground. 
So I'm trying to do this slowly so that I'm engaging all the stabilizing muscles. From here, I'm going to push from my front foot, start uh, shifting my weight to the back leg. Once I've, once I've gotten the weight on the back leg, I'm going to turn and face the other way so that I'm now facing 180 from where I was before. Extending my hands to that side, I start leaning forward. I start bringing my back foot uh, ever so closer to my front foot. I start lifting it off the ground. It's straight out of the ground. Then I slowly bring it forward so that it's not touching my calf, pointed to the left. My left leg pointed to the left. Slowly bring it down. Relax. We're gonna do the same thing, moving the other way. The hands can come up. Your left leg bends, turns to the right, touch your calf. Start extending your leg behind you, tilting forward. Bend your front leg so that you're getting yourself closer to the ground. Touch the floor very gently. Start transferring your weight to the back leg, still facing to the right. Then turn and face to the left. Now start reaching forward. Start bringing your back foot slightly, ever so slightly forward. Lift it up off the ground. Start bringing it gently towards your calf. Touch your calf. Touch the ground. Relax. Let's do it three more times on both sides. Arms go up, leg to the right, touch your calf. Start extending backwards, backwards, backwards. Ever so gently touch the ground. Transfer your weight. Change your facing. Start reaching forward, forward, forward. Your left foot comes off the ground. It starts coming forward, 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 forward. Touches your calf. Touch the ground. Relax. Back where we started. Arms up, leg up, leg to the side. Touch your calf. Start extending backwards, 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 backwards. Touch the ground. Transfer the weight, transfer the weight, transfer the weight. Change the facing. Start extending towards your left. Right foot off the ground. Right foot comes forward, 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 forward. Touch the calf. Touch the ground, relax. All right, that's fun. <laughs> uh, let's do another uh, balancing pose. This is a, uh, there's a few options that you can do for here. You can't see my feet, unfortunately, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna touch, try to reach as far down to the ground as I can. And I'm gonna do this just by tilting off my pelvis. I'm not gonna bend, I'm not gonna focus on curving my back. Try to keep your back straight. You're going to tilt the pelvis and you're going to reach down as far down as you can go. If you can touch the ground, great. From here, you're going to transfer your weight to your right leg. You're going to bend your right leg ever so slightly and you're going to lift up your left foot. If you can touch the ground, great. If you can't, well, that's all right. You're going to lift your foot, your hands off the ground so that your hands are hovering, your foot is hovering. Now, you have a few options. You can have your hands uh, basically in front of you. You can do uh, just kind of put them together or in front of your chest as you kick back your leg that is up, your left leg. From here, if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, oops, go in slightly forward so that I don't hit my counter, you can extend your front hands forward and do so slowly so that if you're finding that you're losing balance, just recover back to the position that you were stable and try to whoop, and try to extend your hands forward and hold. It helps if you stare into one point, pick a focal point and look at that point. Try to like <laughs> Extend your low leg, make sure that it's straight, straight in it so that it is nice and stable. It is not bent. You're just using balance. Take one breath, two, three, and slowly bring your left leg back towards your right leg. Extend it down, touch the ground. All right, check it out. Let's do the same thing facing the other way or with the other leg, up to you how you want to accomplish that. So start with yourself nice and upright. You're going to hinge at the hips and extend and try to touch as far co closer to the ground as you can. From here, bend your left leg, lift up your right leg. And if you want, you can keep your hands on the ground or you can lift them off the ground, up to you. Hold here for a moment, lift your hands off the ground, 
If it helps, bring your hands towards your chest for stability. I'm gonna move back so that I don't hit my counter. Start extending your right leg back, slowly and slowly so that you are stable as you do this whole action. Then start extending your arms if you want. They can go sideways, they can go forward, or they can stay in front of your chest. You gotta hold the breath for three, breathe, two, one. Slowly bring your back leg towards your chest. You can bring your hands towards, uh, towards your chest as well, and slowly rise. All right, uh, following the mechanics that we did last time, let's do a little bit more of the rotation of the foot. So I'm gonna have a stick just as a way to kind of have a weapon, something for you to, to kind of visualize. Have your right leg forward, weapon on your right hand. Actually, on your left hand, doesn't really matter. That's where we're just gonna start with the left. From here, I'm gonna drive the rotation of my hips through the back leg. When I recover, I'm gonna come back with my back leg and I'm isolating just the rotation of back leg comes forward, back leg draws back. Forward, back, forward, back. You can think about it as I'm delivering a mandretto followed by a reversal, transferring my weight to the back leg. Transfer forward, transfer back. The rotation is done entirely through my left leg. Imagine you're squashing a nice little bug with your foot. All right, switch hands, switch facing. Same action, right foot is now driving the action. Weapon is on the, the uh, right hand, striking forward, striking back. Forward, back. All right, switch facings, right leg forward, weapon on the right hand. We're gonna drive this through the front leg now. So the back leg is gonna stay relaxed but stable. I'm gonna drive my rotation from my front leg so that I am driving and pivoting this. Uh, you can see my foot now. As I turn, I'm letting my hips rotate so that I strike to the right. And when I go to the, to the left, I rotate from my front leg. So I'm going from the right, left, right, left, right, left. Driving this all through rotation of the hip. Chance, left leg forward, weapon in the left hand, same idea. You're driving the action from the left leg. All right, pause. Good, let's grab swords. Swords. Uh, so a few weeks back, oh, by the way, happy one month of isolation. It's been about a month since we've been in isolation, so yay. <laughs> yay. Uh, about huh, beginning of this, I made a video of some exercises that kind of solo exercises to practice. Let's actually do some of those uh, as a continued warm up, and then we'll do some review of the things from last week. So the idea, idea here is we're gonna be doing a strike with a pass, gather, pass back. So the footwork is gonna be, I have my right leg back, I'm gonna pass forward, I'm gonna gather, step back with the left, now I can pass with the left. Gather, step back with the right, pass with the right. It's a little bit of a hop in a lot of ways. I am passing forward, 
hopping back. Fast forward, hop back. And let's actually just do that as a little bit of a warm up. Uh, what I want you guys to focus on as you do this is, uh, you can actually use the curtain as a kind of a good, uh, good measurement. I'm not going up and down as I back up. I'm trying to stay level throughout the entire action. My legs stay bent as I do my action. So try this a few times going forward and back. Keep your legs bent. I like to keep my chest leaning forward. It gives me good structure to move from this out of this and back forward. I'm using also the balls of my feet every step. So that's something I want you guys to engage as well. Is making sure that you're not using your heels. Stay on the balls of the feet. It lets you move with more briskness. Beautiful. Let's add some sword work. So I'm going to start with the sword in Posta di Gona. I'm going to deliver Mezzo Mandretto, ending with a sword point uh, somewhat online, mostly because I don't have space. If you want to do a full fendente, feel free to do so. From here, I'm going to recover by gathering back, coming into a covered fenestra, then stepping into Posta di Gona Sinestra. The same thing from the left shoulder. Reverse the fendente, gather into fenestra, back to Posta di Gona. Mandretto, fenestra, gona sinestra. Reverso, fenestra, gona. Mandretto, rever uh, gona sinestra. Cut, cover, recover. Cut, cover, recover. Cut, cover, recover. And as we do this, you can think about, you finish your blow, you cover the line, you come back into guard ready to strike, you can strike again. You can do oh, it no, <laughs> at your own pace. All right, relax, check your shoulders. We're gonna start with fendentes for a minute, then we're gonna do rising blows. So go ahead and begin. Start delivering fendente, recover, reverso, recover. Fendente, recover. Reverso, recover. Fendente, recover. Reverso, recover. As you deliver the blows, exhale during your blow, inhale during the recovery. Your shoulder doesn't have to rest into your shoulders. You can come just by the shoulder, from fenestra by the shoulder to deliver your neck flow. All right, rising blows. So in Posa di Dona, you rise, recover. Rise from the left, recover. Have this action through the pommel. For the mandretto, you pull the pommel into a mandretto sotano. For the reverse sotano, you push the pommel to deliver the blow. Let's start adding some of the faint actions. So my vacuum cleaner here with my beautiful sword is gonna be uh, illustrating some of the things that we didn't cover last time, which is, which line am I actually attacking? So we have mandretto or a reverso, essentially a, an attack on one line that was redoubled on the same line, an attack on the line followed by an attack on the opposite line an attack on one line followed by the reverse rising bow in the other line. So if I have a sword here, my first action look 
I deliver my feet on the pressure to my inside. I go underneath the sword and attack again on the same line. And I'm going just over my opponent's sword into their hands, most likely. Action two, I feint to my inside, yield and deliver a reversal, creating opposition against my opponent's sword. Action three, I had a feint that began a rising blow into my opponent's hands on the opposite line, potentially creating cover by attacking the hands if I needed to. Because we did, hopefully you guys did some of the homework, which was trying to do this on the reverse side. So let's start on the reverse side. Let's try it together. We're going to start with the sword on the left shoulder or the non-dominant shoulder. I'm going to deliver a reverse of indente. I'm going to begin the stramazzone and deliver another reverse of indente over my opponent's sword, stepping away from the blade to give myself time and space to keep myself safe. Recover. We deliver a reverso, deliver the stramazzone, and follow with a mandretto fendente to create opposition with your opponent's sword. Recover. And now we're going to deliver the rising blow, the rising mandretto. We deliver a reverso fendente. I begin the stramazzone by dropping the point, and from here I pull the sword to deliver a rising blow into my opponent's hand. So let's go through those three again. Reverso, followed by reverso. Recover. Reverso, followed by mandretto. Recover. And reverso, followed by mandretto sotano. Recover. Let's just cycle, cycle through those. I'm going to call them out as one, two, three. One. Recover. Two. Recover. Three. Recover. 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 Let's do the same thing with the mandretto line. I'm just going to leave my handy assistant over here. Hopefully, we'll stay in place. And same action, starting with the mandretto line. So, one. Mandretto, mandretto, recover. Two, mandretto, reverso, recover. Three, mandretto, reverso, sotano, recover. One, recover. Two, recover. Three, recover. One, recover. Two, Recover, three, recover, one, recover, two, recover, three, recover, one, recover, two, recover, three, recover, pause. Do any of you guys have any questions? Why don't we do the same side sotano? That's a good question. Because it is a faint via stramazzone. Uh, so what Ellie's asking is, if I deliver my cut here, why don't I do the rising blow on the same side? Because it's a different mechanic. All right. If I'm delivering the faint via stramazzone, and one of the key components of it, and one of the things that will work the best is, I'm conserving the energy of the weapon. This yeah. downward circle that I'm delivering lets me move into this new angle. Because the sword is dropping, because I'm initiating with a fendente, it's dropping, I would have to stop the energy of the weapon to come back up with a rising blow. Mm -hmm. So that the feint doesn't work in the same way. Uh, I can conserve that energy and come back on that rising line. Uh, I could... Um, 
accessing that line, you require a different mechanic, usually from an, an attack to miss. You couldn't really hmm. do a trauma thing via stramazzone. Yeah. It's, but this part of it is uh, the mechanic of it. Yeah. Uh, so what I want to do for the next few minutes is, let's go back to the exercise we're doing where we're attacking, gathering back, and attacking from the opposite line. But now, uh, one question. to throw uh, the faint via stramazzone anywhere you want. So how it's gonna look like is, I'm going to begin my attack. What we were doing before was I was doing a pass and then recover onto the opposite shoulder. Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna initiate an attack. I'm going to faint via stramazzone, complete my action, and then recover to the opposite shoulder. I initiate my attack from the left. I deliver my faint via stramazzone. There I deliver a rising blow into the hands. Then I recover to the opposite shoulder. So I'm attacking, I mean, always attacking right, left, right, left, but it's up to you to incorporate a feint if you wish. So we have about a minute, a uh, minute? Let's have about two minutes, uh, three minutes, two minutes of this. I'll tell you in a second. So let's start with a minute, go ahead and begin. You're delivering an attack from your right, strike, recover. Actually, let's pause for a moment. I'll add a few more things that might make this a little bit easier. Option number one, I can do the feint without stepping. I begin my attack. I don't step. I do all my sword work without stepping. Perfectly valid. Option number two, I begin my attack. I gather my foot or do a small step forward, and then I step with the opposite foot. Then I recover. So either one works where you're doing everything fixed. You're just driving the motion through your hips or driving the motion through your hips with a small motion of your back leg, stopping early and then stepping to the new line. So whatever you feel more comfortable is a, you move as you need to. Make sure the sword is moving well ahead of your body. Only step after your sword is extended. All right, go ahead and begin. a particular one that you like a lot and you want to do a lot of it, feel free to do that over and over again. I think it's Elia. Would you mind muting if you're not actually talking? <laughs> There's a my my roommates are wondering what the moaning is. <laughs> so if you're doing this with a one-handed sword, you still have 30 more seconds. I'm just watching you guys. If you're doing this with a one-handed sword, you can let the rotation follow really nicely. The seramazzone can be done entirely through the wrist. Mateus. Yeah. Uh, when you do the uh, fendente stramazzone, uh, yielding to stramazzone, and go back with the sotano on the other side, yep. the forte goes around the head? Not necessarily. That's a good question. So uh, the mechanic, let's pause for a moment. The mechanic for that rising blow, we talked about it last class, but okay. it is a cool mechanic. Uh, it's about, I'll have again my trusty assistant here. So I am delivering my first attack here. I begin the yield and the sword is still pointed forward. From here, I push the pommel so that it actually does a uh, circle in front of my head. It feels a lot like a mezzano and I can deliver the blow from there. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room so that I don't hit things. But you can test this 
and it's going to feel correct when you can move it at speed. If you feel that you're fighting the sword, it doesn't work as well. So I'm delivering my blow there, followed by that. I'm delivering my stramazzone that rolls into a mm -hmm. uh, reverse sotano. So if I do it from the side, I'm delivering my fendente stramazzone, keeping my sword in front of me, delivering the mitzano or sotano that feels like a mitzano in front of me. So the point should not go behind you. In fact, if it goes behind you, it's too slow. And it works from either side. I'm delivering my reverse ascendente, begin the yield, and driving the pommel, I can move the sword in this new arc. All right, uh, let's try that. Actually, let's try that from either side. You don't need to step if you don't want to. Just try practicing the mechanic because it's a worthwhile, it's a fun mechanic to work on. I'm delivering a reverso followed by a Madrito Sotano, or I'm delivering a Pendente, followed by a Reverse Sotano. And you can just alternate between the two. So caveats to all the feints. You guys can pause for a moment and grab some water if you need to. You need someone to fall for them. And a lot of uh, what I talked about in last class was the idea that all of these actions are done mechanically right now. There's nothing to, uh, there's nothing to, there's no lie to sell to your opponent right now because there's no opponent. So really don't think about these as I am, I am, creating a false attack to follow my opponent. I'm, you think about it as I'm practicing a mechanic that will facilitate my ability to execute the tactical feint when I actually have tactical information. This is all because we don't have partners unless you do. Uh, you must remember that this is, these, you can't just practice this action as I'm going to deliver a feint then an attack. Really think about it as I'm delivering a stramazzone that opens up a line on the opposite line. To give context, Right now, I'm going fairly deep with my attack, delivering the stramazzone to follow through. There was a reversal. In reality, what might happen is I might begin my attack and faint right away because my opponent fell for it. I could initiate my action here. They start pairing. I might actually do my stramazzone much earlier. Say someone acts really, really late. I might actually deliver my faint, step, and then only then begin my stramazzone. And that's something that I want you guys to recognize is this will be more effective when you have an opponent. So, any questions before we move on? Beautiful. Let's start looking at an attack to miss. So the attack to miss, there's a few ways to consider them. You can think about an attack that goes over your opponent's head. So an attack that seems to be going towards their face, but it kind of goes slightly offline or an attack that is falling short. For the cool mechanics that it can practice, let's start with one of the simpler ones, which is an attack that falls short followed by a thrust. So I'll do it against the, against the camera. I can think about, there's a few ways to do this. Well, the simplest one is, I'm delivering my fendente and I drop into the leg. Then immediately cover high because my face is exposed. So if I do it from the side, I'm delivering an attack that comes high my opponent tries to parry that. I drop with my legs into the leg to deliver a cut to the leg. And then I immediately cover by coming into Fenestra and backing the hell away. So a few things that I want you guys, as we practice this, we're just gonna alternate between sides. I'll do it from the, from the left. I'm delivering my cut. I'm imagining that I'm cutting right now. The camera is the face. So I'm imagining I'm cutting the face. They begin a direct opposition defense, so a parry or a collection. That's my cue to drop into the leg. Once I've dropped into the leg, I'm going to slice through the leg, drop my point, and lift up into Fenestra so that my head is covered. If this fails, your head is very exposed, so you want to really practice the idea of delivering the cut and immediately backing up. So if we try this together, I'm going to start with the sword on the right shoulder. I'm delivering my tendente. As they begin to fall for it, I drop by squatting, keeping your shoulders over your hips, cutting their leg, doing a small disengage with a point, 
And imagine you're doing a deflection or a collection in finestra as you shift back and get out of the way. So it is on the left shoulder. I am delivering. I think there's someone trying to rob a car outside of my house. So if I suddenly disappear, just. Oh, there we go. Someone got, he got shouted out. Perfect. It was someone trying to rob a car. Hi. Right. Uh, my apologies. I'm delivering the cut from the left. I see they're, they're trying to bury. I drift and cut their leg and then come back and defend high. So we'll just get out in between the two. Fendente, drift to leg, recover. Reverso, drift to leg, recover. Fendente, recover. Reverso, recover. I'm just watching you guys as you do this. Imagine your squat is you're powering up your legs so that it can bounce back out of the uh, out of position. So it's not just a drop; it is a gathering of energy to push yourself out of the way. Gather the energy to push yourself out of the way. What's the reasoning behind the shuffling back as opposed to a retreat? Ah. Uh, Yes, there is a reason for that. Try just retreating. And tell me the difference between speed. Okay, I want everyone to try it. I want you to just change the footwork between deliver the cut, try to just retreat back, or try to do the little shuffle that we've been doing. I can attack. Retreat, attack, retreat. And try to just do so, finish the pass, try to retreat back, then pass, or finish the pass, gather, and step back. See which one feels faster. Any thoughts? Uh, while you're squatting, it's harder to move your back leg back first, much more. Part of it. Actually, kind of like the, uh, the pass, if you don't turn your body. So you're talking about if you stay, you're passing back? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. So you're cutting here and then passing back? Yeah. OK. That's a cool mechanic. You did not consider that. Usually when I deliver my cut, I am turning to part of it is just the, uh, having my sword and my, and my body in alignment. Uh, if I don't turn my body, sure. I can absolutely see that as if I'm just trying to deliver shallow cut into my opponent, I might be able to, my leg is a little bit more free. No, I mean, I mean, not on the cut, on the retreat. So your, your upper body stay, you, your body's crossed. So your upper body stays at the end, but your legs stay in the same order. There and then pass back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, there's a val there's a value to that. There's not. Uh, you've just delivered the blow here. Yeah. You can use the dropping down to push yourself back up. It, and it costs there. less energy for me, at least. Yeah, it does consume a little bit less energy. The, uh, it just. Yep. Yeah, you're actually. I'm not. In, it is not incorrect. Uh, part of it is I'm just ready to. Since I've already done the rotation of the body, I want to have my legs ready to attack from the left. That yeah, is definitely a benefit to be in a proper guard again. <laughs> yeah, um, this is not wrong. You could have your hands, your legs crossed. It's just, you have to understand why, what you lose when you do this particular rotation. Yeah, you'll have to back up to but, yeah. Uh, so what I wanted to emphasize on that is, usually when I step, and usually when you walk anyway, you're stepping with your right foot, you step with your left foot. So if I have just finished my step here, it's easier to transfer the weight slightly to the left. You just finish your weight, the step with the right. I can, I'm so low that my weight is pretty evenly distributed. I can slowly transfer my weight to my, or quickly transfer my weight to my back leg, free up my front leg so that it get, gets out of the way and I can push myself out. So it's really thinking about step with the right, left, right, left. 
So right, left, right, left. It lets me do this a little bit more quickly and immediately withdraws my body, giving me distance to respond to whatever my, my opponent is doing. Both can work, both. Uh, I could deliver my cut, start stepping with the back leg and then withdrawing, that works as well. But there's a little bit of delay before my body's actually safe. So the gathering back is typically one of the fastest ways to get out of the way. But I digress, uh, both are worth practicing. I prefer my own personal preferences to the gathering because I find it faster, especially I have, I'm fairly bulky. That lets me get out of the way much quicker or retreat back. So uh, before I digress too much and run out of time, let's look at the other attack to miss. So I have my sword, my opponent's sword again. The feint, the estramazzone that we practice, often drew a parry, a uh, defense in opposition. My opponent often came trying to oppose my sword in the same line that I'm attacking. An attack to miss in this variation will often draw a deflection. They're trying to meet me from behind. So I'm attacking over their sword. So he, the camera here is the opponent. Instead of attacking my opponent, I'm actually attacking over their head, the living Mazzone, to come back on the same line that I was in. Uh, just as we did, um, just as we did with the uh, Feint di Stramazzone, I can deliver my attack to me over my opponent's head and come back with the Stramazzone with the, on the same line. So I'm delivering a, mandre, a Mandretto followed by a Mandretto, or I can deliver a Mandretto followed by a Reversal, Sotano, sorry, for, followed by a Mandretto, Sotano, to strike into their hands if I know my opponent likes to bear over, they're not necessarily defending and attacking right away. The septic line, it does not cover you as well, but it can be, a, if you know your opponent a little bit better, it can give you a nice opportunity. So let's practice those two actions. Let me move my sword out of the way. Uh, do you have any questions about that mechanic just before I begin, or you wanna just wait until questions? Anyone? All right, let's try this out. So I'm gonna do it without stepping. I'm delivering my fendente, expose, extending my hands well ahead of my body. I'm going to let the sword go over my head and I'm gonna drop it to my inside line. This is a stramazzone. I'm gonna to step to the right and deliver fendente on the same line that I started. So if someone was deflecting this, if I was in Chingara, the expected action if someone is delivering a mandretto to me would be to deflect that action. So as I move the sword away, I'm getting my opponent to chase my sword, opening up this line for an attack to come. Part of why it's nice to come on the same line again is if I do defend and immediately attack one more time, you're covered because you're attacking on the same line. So let's try those actions. Just uh, we'll do about 10, 15 of them. I'm delivering my, think, my attack to miss over my opponent's sword, strike again on the same line, recover. Attack to miss. Pendente, recover. Attack to miss, pendente, recover. Do it five more times. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, let's try it from the opposite side. Mechanic is the same. I'm delivering my reverso fendente, doing a stramazzone to my outside line, and then stepping to the left, to my inside, to deliver the, the reverso fendente. So. Attack to miss, reverse. All right, a few more times.
cool. So I've seen a few variations on the cuts and I'm going to talk about them all because they are mechanically different and you want to be able to pull each one of the mechanics differently. You, there are times to do each one separately. So how I've been showing this idea is I'm delivering my cut on this fendente plane, keeping the sword in this fendente plane and coming back on the same plane. So if there's a disc, like this imaginary disc in front, on the sword, I'm actually following this disc in front of me without moving my hands, without lifting or dropping my hands. My lead hand stays mostly in the same place. That's my Seramazzone. That's the one that I can conserve the most energy. A few variations that have happened, and there's times for it, either because your hand is a little bit not, not as flexible or because you have gauntlets on, might be I deliver a cut. And instead of following a disc, it's almost like you're doing a cone with a sword. So you're beginning your action, you're drawing a cone instead of a disc. So when I'm doing the disc here, you can see how the sword is actually coming fairly close to my body. In the, the ceiling. If I make it a little bit more of a cone, it actually, it requires me to fight the sword a little bit more. Try it up. Hold the sword in front of you. You're just going to be doing a stramazzone, fendentes, by staying in posa longa. Keep your hands low. Let your hands move as they need to. Try not to hit the ceiling as you do it. The sword must go over your head as you do this. I'm just going to crawl, uh, crouch a little bit so that you can see it. It has to go over my head because I'm delivering a fendente. It's coming from the, my dominant side. So it has to come from this side of my body as I deliver the blow. Now, I want to change the action, make it so that it makes a little cone. Instead of dropping the point close to your hip, try to keep the point a little bit more conical and try to do it fast. Are you still delivering? Yeah. Good. How does it feel? I want you to tell me how, how is that different? I feel like it takes a bit more work to maintain edge alignment in the cone. Yes. Edge alignment is a key one. By moving the plane of the sword in a different direction, you're actually fighting it in two or three different directions instead of just letting it follow the inertia that it wants to do. The attack to miss relies, the speed of the attack to miss is reliant on the fact that the sword is actually moving on the same plane the entire time. What's changing the line is really my body moving from one side to the other. So you want to be as, if, uh, as effective and efficient in this sense by keeping the plane of the sword the same one the entire time. Hmm. So that is one of the variations, especially as you add speed, it starts kind of becoming a little bit choppy. It becomes a little bit more conical. You fight the sword in a plane that it doesn't want to move. So you want to keep it as much as possible moving in this plane. Second one that is important to recognize is if I deliver my attack to miss here and I lift up my hands, it actually slows down the action quite a bit. Now, there's a time where you want to do this, depending on what's in front of you, depending on what your opponent is doing, but I want you to be aware of it. When I'm delivering my attack to miss and I have to bring my hands back in, it actually, well, it moves it further away from my opponent before it moves forward again. If there's a sword in front of me and I want to get around it, it's a, you should be able to do that and you want to be able to do that. But if there isn't, it's much more effective to keep your hands in front of you. It will land the blow much faster, much sooner, I'd rather say. So be aware of how you do your seramazzone. Are you doing your seramazzone keeping your hands extended? Are you doing your seramazzone by bringing the hands back and bringing the hands back forward? Both are correct, but be aware of which one you do. Finally, keep the plane, the motion of, of the sword on the same plane. You should be able to do these attacks with barely any tension on your hand. Don't go too fast. You might hit yourself in the head. Uh, just be mindful of it. But you should be able to move without fighting the energy of the sword. Because I just did it on one side, let's do it on the opposite side. Start. Uh, you're basically going to deliver a reversal. I want you to think about move the sword on the plane of the Move the sword in the plane of the reverso and try to keep your hands extended as you do this. As Mike pointed out, edge alignment. 
are you striking with a true edge every single time? Or at least are you striking with an edge every single time? Good. Try the now, delivering the action by pulling your arms back. See how that changes things. Pull the attack back. What about the uh, lead hand versus the pommel hand? Because in order to keep it on the plane, you're mm -hmm. rotating a lot with your lead hand versus your pommel hand. Um, if you're yanking it by the pommel, the it goes more conical. Um, do, you, do you care at all? I'm, ju I'm just noticing it. That is actually great. I am moving, I believe, especially in the reversal line, I actually move both my hands ever so slightly. I am lifting, lifting the pommel, pulling the pommel down, but my lead hand does move ever so slightly. If I do it from the side, you can see how there's a little bit of motion there of my dominant hand because well, it needs to move, otherwise it doesn't, I can't really accommodate this uh, outside preparation. Yeah. If I do it entirely through uh, my pommel, uh, yeah, it actually, it creates more conical motion, but it is, uh, it's, I'm driving, I say that the fulcrum is typically your lead hand. It's really, realistically, it's actually somewhere in between. Okay. Towards the lead hand, but it's, it's better for it to be done in between. You wanna use both your hands for the rotation. So in this case, my lead hand is moving a little bit and my pommel hand kind of, it's driving the motion, but it's being, let me start again. The motion is being driven from the pommel, but the edge alignment and the, uh, the placement of the sword is being led through the lead hand. Cool. So to be able to do this well, I need to move my lead hand to accommodate where the edge of the sword is gonna go. Does that answer your question, Sander? Yeah, perfectly, thank you. Yep. Uh, uh, we have a few more minutes left. Let's... Um, wait, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Cool, so I'm noticing my automatic tendency is the opposite of what you're doing in that, right, if I throw Mandrito and then you do the Stramazzone, my tendency is to do that Stramazzone on my right side, whereas you're doing the Stramazzone to Mandrito on your left side. Yes, that's because of the opponent, right? So I'm just gonna, so right now you're talking about doing it one-handed. You want to do it this line as yeah. opposed to doing it that line. Right. Right? Uh, let's put a sword in, the pla in place. <clears throat> nope, don't fall. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, for, if I do the Stramazzone on this line, I stay on the same line. So part of what I'm trying to draw is, if you imagine the sword is actually going this way, so it's starting low and coming high, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to make that sword move as much as possible. So I attack over the sword, drawing a deflection, doing the stramazzone on my inside, and as the sword moves across, I can deliver my blow on the opposite line. That's essentially what I'm trying to draw. Without context, it kind of makes it a little bit silly. You want to be able to do it on both sides. I want to be able to do it on the inside, and I want to be able to do it on the outside. So there are just but one. Go ahead. Sir. Sir. Um, I was I was just going to say, isn't one of those an attack to miss, and the other one a feint? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, they're both deceptions, and they're both mechanically useful. But yeah, that's it. Draws different. Uh, it draws different actions from an opponent depending on where they are. Wait, which one's which? Ah. Sorry, so they're getting a. All right, so which one is, so if I'm on the same side, is that the feint as opposed to the to miss? I don't know, because there's no context. I taught it as, if I do it on the same side, yeah. we're practicing it as if it was a feint. And if I do it on the, on the opposite side, the action just practice, it's as if it was an attack to miss. Now, because there's no, no one else doing a sword fight, I can't really say what it is without kind of creating a, uh, there's no, uh, there's no universal way to say if you do a stramazzone on this side, it's going to be a parry or a feint, because it could be an attack to miss, gotcha. depending on what my opponent is doing. So uh, if you actually if you get someone to sword fight with you, I can explain that a little bit better. With I can guide you with your partner, but without context, it's difficult to ultimately practice these and tactically specifically. So they're both valid, yeah. So say that again. They're both valid options, they're just yes. different options? Cool. Yeah, with the context of what my opponent is doing is critical for this work. 
Right. But anyway, let's do, uh, we have about four more minutes. Uh, we have four more minutes. All right, we have about four more minutes. Let's do three minutes of, uh, of these. So with the same, uh, same uh, principle we had before, I'm going to deliver an attack to miss on one side, recover in the opposite line, then attack to miss on the opposite line, recover. If you want to add leg attacks into that, feel free to do so as well. Uh, let's start now. Attack from the right, deliver an attack to miss, recover in the opposite line. Attack from the left, attack to miss, recover. If you feel particularly apt, you can incorporate rising blows as well. You can deliver an attack to miss. Uh, you can deliver an attack to miss that rises on the opposite line. You can deliver an attack to miss, sorry, that rises on the same line, I, I mean. Deliver an attack to miss, deliver a sultan. Reverse attack to miss, reverse sultan. All right, 10 more seconds. And pause. All right, so that was the mechanic for an attack to miss. Really what we've been practicing is, can we do a stramazzone on one line? Can we do a stramazzone on the opposite line? And that those are the things that you can practice for the uh, to uh, execute attacks and misses or things. Other thing that I want I want you all to practice if you're practicing this without any input, make sure that you're moving in the right order. It's super easy to start moving the body. Super easy to begin. You start moving the body and kind of the sword is lagging after the body. It feels weird. You want to practice having that exaggerated extension before everything else. You want to make sure that. Your sword is so well ahead of your body that you have time to respond with your step, with your feet, once your opponent does something for you. So it's really useful as you're practicing solo, having that full extension, full extension, the sword is moving ahead of my body, then I can step. And getting that happening is going to be the kind of the most useful thing for all of the provocations as you practice. Do you have any questions? We still have a few minutes left. So I'll happily field some questions. I do. Um, the, the, the difference that I remember, I, I don't know if I learned this or just kind of inferred it, but the difference, difference between an attack miss and a feint is that a feint is a motion that is aborted and a, an attack miss is carried through. Like, you, like with a feint, you are making your attack and then you're changing it into another one. While with an attack to miss, you're actually more or less completing your action before moving on. Yes. Is, is that? That is correct. Uh, okay. I will refine that a little bit better. Is the attack to miss will never hit a target. The attack to miss is deliberately off target and it can complete its full, uh, full range of motion because you're not aiming for the target. Whereas the feint can... If I begin the action, my opponent hasn't done anything, I can continue on the same line and strike them on the intended, the deceived line. I can change if it was a deception or not. Whereas on the, yeah, or whereas on the attack to miss, I will never hit my opponent. If my opponent does not respond, I have to change the line that I'm on. I don't know if you guys can hear the, all the banging happening right now, but that's a seven o'clock cheer uh, starting to happen. Uh, do you guys have any other questions? Well, I'm good. All right, let's salute out and uh, let's uh, clap for some of the health workers. 
uh, weapons at your side. Thank you all for joining me. Arte. 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 Honore. 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 Wonderful. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>